been my partner in the studio for the last many years and I'm with Jake Pador. We've asked Jake to join us and uh, Jake will create the beautiful ambiance for us. So the next project we're talking about, we're envisioning rugs in a public setting to take up a city block and we're imagining performers on top of those rugs and we're imagining the cameras taking pictures of those people because hey if it's not a movie what is it so says art smith and you and i are the sorcerer's apprentices and we've been listening to this artist who was famous in the past written out of history living in the future with the song and dance team of bunny and bester and it's up to us to both uh, interpret what they're saying and to bring them back. You imagine that you have to tell the story of the tribe and you have three pieces of chalk and you write on the wall whatever to the best of your ability. So that's what we've been doing, taking down the revelation mm. as it has come. Mm. How do you see it? First of all, a trust in the process. You know, art is all about the process. And yet in this case, usually you have an idea that you're working towards. Over this three-year period, I've watched pieces, parts of pieces emerge one year. We have no idea how they fit into the whole story. And then three years later, the, that piece of the story starts emerging. and it. And, it, and that fits in. So it's like this massive puzzle piece that keeps coming together and building. And we have such imperfect knowledge of it. We don't know. We don't know. We so, see it happen. So usually in a situation That's, like this, there's some master in charge. Yeah. And right. our master has disappeared, but keeps revealing itself in strange ways and will tell us things like um, every time you think you think you know what you're doing, stand in your head because what you think is most important is probably least important. Uh, well, so you, you have such a, your knowledge of both literature and art history is deep. And so these things are both um, immediate and fresh and they also have these threads through time. You know, you touch base with people and events that weave themselves into the larger picture that, for me, give it this lineage, this longevity that's so unexpected because it's so immediate. It's like a jazz piece. It's so immediate and so improvisational. And yet, and yet these lineages sort of come through these these temporal ideas come yeah. through. And we're always, we're, we're always surprised. Yes. Smith is the master of, 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 the, of the joke. And, you know, does any of this matter? Does it, does it matter not? Is there a there there? Is there a no there there? Does it, yeah. does it, you know, what is it? One of the things I love about Smitten and what he gives is there are there's the politics right now are so difficult and there's so much that's gnarly going on and there's a humor there's an ability to bring these very difficult things in with this levity at the same time it's this alchemical mix of humor and pathos and all together well, our, 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 our way has been to tell the news to feel the moment but make it rhyme in a way that um, 
is not the reportage of the news because the news goes downstream so fast, you know, so it's, it's so old so quickly. And trying to get into a deeper, you know, come from a deeper place and, and see how much of that we're seeing out there is within us. Yeah. You know, we have, you know, a lot of the things, a lot of the sins that we are pointing at are, 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 are within. And then, yeah. you know, the whole looking introspectively you know, then you see all this, and then you go, then what? Yeah. You know, so what do we do with this mess? Yeah. Um, and so that's been an interesting part of the investigation. I like the immersion of the, the bigness of the pieces. The rugs, as Mark was saying, you know, we have enough to lay out in a city block, and people can walk on the art. It's, it's uncommon, and you become part of the piece. It's another part of the work where the community becomes part of the piece. So this began for me probably seven years ago. I wandered through LAX airport and saw the video art on the, on the, on the multiple screens. And I wanted to do storytelling that could be in a public space. And so it demanded a new kind of um, writing because it had to be circular because people will only come for a, a couple of minutes and look at something and it had to be denser than you know it's not like a movie uh, it had to have more density to it mm -hmm. uh, almost the density of poetry mm -hmm. uh, so that if people do watch it in a loop it, it's it's watchable on a second time in a good piece of art the meaning should be just kind of right on the tip of the tongue, mm -hmm. but not defined. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, it should be a little bit, meaning should just be a little bit beyond you. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And why I love painting is because it's it's visceral. It's not, you know, my, my professional life was as, as a writer, and writing was a very constipated thing because it all comes through your brain and you have to think. Mm -hmm. And the painting is bypasses all that, and boom, you do it, and you don't know what it is, and it's scary, uh, and it's only good if it's something that you couldn't think of. If I could think of it, then you know somebody else could think of it. Partially, your ability to um, uh, enter to uh, to articulate what comes up in the unconscious and to value it and to express it so freely brings up these surprising moments um, and surprising ideas because of the trust in that process. Um, but also, we went to the Fog Show in San Francisco yeah. and that resulted in a lot of conversation that was very fertile for us. So we went and saw Amy Siegel speak. Amy Siegel is a uh a very prominent American artist right now. So Amy Siegel was a real revelation to us. Yeah, and she was talking about these relationships between the museums and the auction houses and the art galleries and how that dynamic works. It's a very, you know, it's the art machine. And, 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 and the collectors and the art machine. Collector, yeah. and, and it was tongue in cheek and yet it was totally corrupted. Yeah. And yet her presentation was amazing. For instance, there was some um, reference to a movie, um, Price of Everything. So I went to watch that after seeing the, her speak. And in the course of that movie, there was this short seg segment. Uh, they were talking to Stefan Edlis. Edlis. And there was a little piece about, he said, brown is bad, red is good, and never paint fish. Well, we had just finished a year of painting fish. So I thought this clip was really yeah, so, so whole, amusing. So this is the great cosmic joke. Yeah. And, and we're looking at this, and out of, uh, you know, because we started our project, it starts in the Cote de Banga, out on the reef, fish meat, fish fall in love. Uh, and dance in the circle of love. So we had this thing in a room full of fish and we're imagining a, um, we're imagining a hologram wall of fish where it's mm -hmm. about a, a foot deep off the wall and you're in this room and the fish are there and they're nipping at you mm -hmm. and, and uh, 
know, so we're imagining both what we're doing, imagining what we're doing with technology. And so we did this, and that, and then he came up out of nowhere. Yeah. And no fish. No fish. And so then that gets integrated in. So that, that gets integrated in. So the 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 price of everything, which was a it's, it's a really yeah. good serious art documentary at the top. Yes. Uh, and the, the, the quote for the price of everything is from the Oscar Wilde quote, uh, a cynic is a man who knows the price of everything and the value of nothing. Mm -hmm. And so the question for us is, we could be mad, we could be uh, delusional, we could be on our own little island, you know, just of nuttiness. Uh, it's, it's hard to say what we're doing could have absolutely no value whatsoever and yet for us it's became this sacred practice you know mm. first make it holy mm. then make it beautiful mm. uh, and then you know what is funny and uh, so this led to you know what is the value of nothing at the end of the day at the end of the day yeah. it's the value of nothing is everything uh, you know, in the way that we've been seeing it from Smith. And Smith told us so many things that um, we didn't understand. You know, I, I, I think people have the illusion that when somebody's in the studio or making a piece of art, that they know what's happening. Right. You know, there's usually somebody in control. Right. And that has not been our experience. No. And we go, we show up, and we do the dance, uh, we say the prayer, we give the blessing. Uh, we are both deeply involved in um, anthropomorphism. We are deeply involved in our landscape. So we feel the vibe. We see the faces come out in the rocks. We see what they're telling us. Uh, we read our dreams like an augury. Uh, and then come the, the images off the assembly line. They have positive, uh, an image will have a positive spin, it can have a negative spin, uh, we can shift them in meaning, and we're always surprised because one piece leads to the next piece, you know. And loops back around, as and, I and, said and, in the and, beginning. And loops back. Sometimes there's a piece that you wonder and then all of a sudden you realize what, you know, it happens in life too, an event will happen and sometimes you don't know for years what the import of it is. And this art is like that as well. Yeah. We don't know the import until... Or, or, or no import, and we're perfectly, you know, trying to come to, <laughs> come to come to grips with abject failure and humiliation. You know, with this as the maker of art. You know, what are we looking for? Are we looking 